Welcome to the Grow Moringa Podcast, show number five. The the overarching scope of that, like the company that that uh, I own is Sovereign Quest LLC, and the premise of that is my belief is that basically Bitcoin un unlocked human creativity because it was the it was you said linchpin. It was the linchpin that helped the individual become their own bank. So turning your your art, your creativity into value, being able to do that instead of like giving that value up to a uh, centralized authority bigger than us that we were born into. Now we have the ability to be our own bank, to transact uh, based on what we truly love. Hey, thanks everybody. Thanks so much for joining us for the Grow Moringa podcast. Today's episode features our partner in the Grow Moringa Collective, Jason Rashidnia. And you guys might know him through his wonderful work in the solar industry, also in the crypto business and space. And uh, he's also been conquering the world, uh, teaching regenerative agriculture and farming. And so we've teamed up to bring you the Grow Moringa Collective, the members area, and we're figuring out ways and strategies to growth hack our business so that way more people know about Moringa and also we become the central hub for Moringa around the entire world. So our whole entire process right now is, is bringing people into the membership, offering great value, lots of education, lot, oh, overboarding. We're, we're just like, how much can we give people so that way they are happy with learning and have all the information that they need. And so we spend a lot of time weekly, we have meetings together, uh, we're on the board of directors together, so we share a lot of responsibilities in the Grow Moringa Collective, and we talked a lot about just the business and, and how we plan on uh, transitioning into the next phase where more members can fulfill orders with us because we run a fulfillment by members organization where if you come in and you want to make some money with Moringa, what you can do is you can actually uh, fulfill orders right away. So the certification process is fairly simple actually for someone that's selling trees or seeds. And as you move up in the ranks and you do different things like harvesting and grabbing loose leaf, uh, stripping greens and also making powder and possibly even going to a processing facility to get your greens capsulized, there are options uh, within the collective to sell your Moringa either first in the first tier to other members and then the second tier and the third tier is to get on the map as well as get certified by completing the, the book and also the courses and the classes that we have in the members area. You can see here this is just kind of like our little labyrinth uh, cutting zone where we have lots of little cuttings that we've just stuck in the ground and this is essentially where we get our supply from cuttings. So if someone orders cuttings on the website, what we would do is literally just take this baby right here and we go ahead and just pull her right out and she's already got roots on it and we sell sprouted cuttings. So this is a cutting that we just stuck in the ground and what we would do is we would cut this up and maybe put uh, this in a box, uh, cut it into like three or four pieces, put it in a box so that way you can actually re-sprout it yourself at home. And uh, we'll just stick this right back in here. We have lots of uh, oak mulch down on the ground here. So it's really soft little area. And Moringa is called the never die tree because it never dies. It's always regrowing and has regenerative capabilities. And essentially that's what we're doing here with the Moringa tree is teaching others how to grow their farm regeneratively. So we have lots of uh, tools and we're, we're building relationships with suppliers to get our prices down lower so like as a member you want to fulfill orders you have to get packaging and and do, do some of these things that might be a little overwhelming at first but we're honing in on what it Jason is an analytic master he's going in there and figuring out okay we had more more views on this we had more clicks on this and we had more sales on this and then how can we hone in and and uh, what do they call that retest and do a second second round and a third round and we're learning how to run ads and do things very specifically for selling because it's an important aspect of getting our moringa material out there into the hands of the buyer uh, one of the things that separates people is that farmers sometimes don't want 
to talk to the buyers and the buyers are trying to talk directly to the farmers. So it's like we're trying to connect those two types of people together. And thankfully, Jason and I communicate really well together. And I'm excited to share with you today the next episode of the Grow Ringo podcast with Jason. I hope you enjoy. Thanks so much for joining us. Make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell button so that way you can find out when we have our next episode. Thanks so much for joining us and enjoy the show with Jason. Peace. Again, for coming on to the show. Thanks for being back to the Grow Moringa podcast. I'm grateful to be back. I'm excited to get more consistent with this. Yeah. Oh, this is great. This is this is this is this is our newsroom, Moringa newsroom, news outlet, and we wanted to welcome Jason Rashidnia back to the show. He's our co-founder in the Grow Moringa Collective. Thanks again for coming back to the show and, of course, hanging out with me and joining me. I'm having a great time just catching up with you and having a wonderful afternoon talking about our future and also the future of Moringa. Well, thanks, Jason. What are what are you up to lately? Um, working on some tech stuff. So I've been rebranding and repositioning my offer, just like where I want to go with what I've been doing, right? It's just like, so I'm a growth marketer but I never built a, like a company around it. It was just a consulting thing. So uh, over these last few weeks, I'm talking to some of my tech friends and finally said, okay, I'm just gonna build a, an elite team of tech people, right? And just sell it as a service and kind of just build my, my company around that, my brand around that and stop like, you know, just super frazzled. Right? Yeah, like that yeah. Was the last five years was everything like a little bit of everything, but I'm unifying all my relationships now to be like, this is us, this is what we're gonna yeah. do. I feel that because we've been able to unify this last year, because I know that when we became partners, you also were partners in a few other businesses. And, and that's what's really cool about being a part of this relationship with you is, is we each have our own thing. It's like we're, we are our own co-op. You know, we're collectively building our businesses separately, but also Dependently and here connected because now we have Grow Moringa and of course I have Kendra Kenry Studios Which is my architecture firm, which are very helpful and integral in building But we together have Grow Moringa, which is our linchpin Which is our kind of like hinge point that that really everything goes around because we're even talking about Going up to that next level with with permaculture capitalism You know and that's really what is on the forefront of our discussion a lot is, yes, we're talking Moringa, but ultimately the way that we're planting Moringa is permaculture, but the way that we're able to fund everything that we're doing is capitalism. Yeah. You know, so we're, we're tying our two favorite things together, business and farming and forming the permaculture capitalist. Yeah. It's a movement. I'm like silly excited around about that. Like that's the movement of everything that yeah. we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, we're gonna we're gonna name that our our essentially our blog. We're rebranding our Grow Moringa newsletter and blog because we're actually, you know, interested in acquiring other other businesses and other blogs and and uh, companies that are in the regenerative agriculture space. Yeah. Um, but before we do that, we wanna do a few things in the crypto world. What are you doing with cryptocurrency and what is your cryptocurrency's role in your company? Good question. Uh, so overall, just quick background on what I've done in, in Bitcoin and crypto as a whole. Like Since 2010, Bitcoin came out in 2009. I, I've known about Bitcoin since essentially then. So it's like 2010, I used to mine Bitcoin my first business was called BitBar. It was a craft beer and wine bar that accepted Bitcoin way too early, <laughs> before way too early before everybody else uh, even knew about it, right? Like, so I was definitely ahead of the curve, but that business went to the wayside, though I still kept my passion for Bitcoin and crypto as a whole. And then um, the phase of when Ethereum came out somewhere, I think it was uh, 2016, um, that opened a door, a wider door for uh, developers to create on top of the blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so that created another massive market, which is uh, like Internet 2.0. Um, well, not Internet 2.0, Internet 3.0. Yeah, bit, yeah. Which is uh, just ownership in data networks, right? And right, because right now 2.0 is those companies own everything. 3.0 going to 5.0 is we each become our owner of our own blockchain, essentially our own banks and all of those things. We become we become the it thing, the blood, the signature. It goes back to sovereignty, which is what you've also been talking about as well. Sovereignty Quest, which is your mission statement. Um, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, yeah the, the, the overarching scope of that, like the company that, that uh, I own is Sovereign Quest LLC. And the premise of that is my belief is that basically Bitcoin un unlock human creativity because it was the, it was, it was, you said linchpin, it was the linchpin that helped the individual become their own bank. So turning your, your art, your creativity into value, being able to do that instead of like giving that value up to a centralized authority bigger than us that we were born into. Now we have the ability to be our own bank, to transact uh, based on what we truly love. And so, you know, that, you know, with Bitcoin created this whole new world essentially for us that we can, uh, you know, take in our own hands now. Yeah. Uh, and when, when Ethereum, like you said, was uh, launched and built in 2016, how soon after that was Tezos developed? So the original premise of Ethereum, uh, if you go back to the forums, they, they said it was a proof of stake algorithm. Uh, where you know the more you buy, the more you stake into the network, the more you earn um, a say in the future of the network, right? And they never actually accomplished that yet as really? Ethereum, and still haven't accomplished it. But now they're, I think they said towards the end of this year, Ethereum is finally going to go from a uh, proof of work to proof of stake algorithm. Yeah. But in this last five years, six years of that, Tezos came out. Um, through a bunch of pioneering developers in France. Um, his name is Arthur Brightman. He was the original guy. Um, and so he built the premise of Tezos to be a true proof of stake algorithm. What does all that mean? It just means that it's an unforkable chain. So uh, if somebody, if a group of people decide they don't want Tezos going in a direction, you, everybody has to vote for the direction of that. Wow. You can't just like create another Tezos and just break it off with Ethereum. That's what they were doing. So there was Ethereum, then a huge DAO hack happened. Um, and then they created Ethereum Classic and a bunch of people broke off. They lost millions and millions of dollars. So anyways, like they, that's that was the biggest problem with Ethereum as a whole. Like you can go build a network of people buying into the ecosystem, but if you break the chain and fork, now like you've lost, you've diluted the value uh, of uh, that, that economy. So, wow. Um, the future of blockchains, in my opinion, is an unforkable chain, where it's like it's a infinitely upgradable based on everybody coming to an agreement and not just a couple bad actors or different philosophies. It's just you know, Tezos is what Tezos is, and you can build chains or coins on top of Tezos. So if you have an idea, whatever, just rebrand, build it, and you don't have to break Tezos. Wow. Uh, so that's what makes Tezos so special. And, and um, it reminds me of cooperation. You know, it reminds me of collective business. And it's, it's true. It's true digital cooperation. Right? Yeah, because it's, it's almost kind of like uh, collective and, and co-op business. It works really well on paper, but it's some of the most difficult companies to run. Although once they get it right, co-ops and collectives are historically the longest, longest living businesses. They are the longest, the oldest businesses to this day are collective co-ops. They're not the biggest businesses, but they have the happiest employees and they have the the most fair owners, you know, which is what really what attracted me to the collective business model. 
is coming from school, wanting to start an architecture firm, but wanted to also build a community around around something that I was passionate about so that way I could, you know, find clients essentially. I'm, I'm here to build a community. And um, one of the things that we're going to offer together within our community that we've been building this past year is the service of providing our, our members their own website, their own Moringa website, specific. We're specifically offering this service right now in our beta test as just Moringa, just Moringa businesses. We, we're going to do lots of keywording analysis. We're going to go in in today's podcast with some of the numbers, but wanting wanting our members because we have a huge member pool now. We're up to like 400 members and a lot of them want to have their own business. So they want to have their own ring of business and they're asking us, how can we have our own lander page? Or how can we have our own website? Or how can we share your affiliate link out and get more sales and make money and generate more income? And so that's what we're taking uh, um, taking under, overtaking over the next few weeks is, is our new service called Service Ghost. Essentially, it's a white labeling service, right? Could you tell us a little bit more about our new service? Yeah, sure. So uh, the, the entire premise of Service Ghost uh, is to basically be uh, the back end tech support, top tier technology company where we are a group of growth marketers, UI, UX designers, software developers, um, eventually cybersecurity is coming, but that, that'll be a little bit. Um, but ultimately, the, the premise of it is, is just a team of experts who will help grow brands online, right? And um, I've been collecting some really smart people over the years in my agency work, and they become my friends, and they, they, they have their own great case studies and great experience. So it's just like, hey guys, what do you think if we just like form the team? So every time we would have a basic offer for the marketplace, small businesses uh, that need to grow, we would come in and we would just redo the whole company, essentially. It's just wow. like we would reposition the company because we're growth marketers. We use tech, all the best technology we can find um, to get your message out to the world faster um, and grow faster overall. So yeah, I mean, service, service goes to an all-in-one, you know, growth tech team. Wow. Brands, I mean, I still gotta get that the wording right. Yes, and it's- the overall scope. Awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks for, for being the lead on that. Um, I love your team. I've met with your team, most of them in India. I really love them because we have a department, uh, uh, a, a Grow Moringa India, essentially, where where they're also helping us connect the farmers that are in India uh, to import their Moringa to the USA. Yeah, actually, uh, the, the partner in service goes is Neil. Um, yes. So he, I told him about the whole idea. Like, actually, we came up with the idea on a call together just like this we were just talking and like what do we want to do blah 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 i was like what do you think about service goes you know like this whole concept yes. right and he was the one on present in the call when the inspiration happened and yep. so i was like be the partner in it yeah great cool so we bought the domain that day wow and uh you know just kind of been working on it we, we closed our first client last week which is a, a local business in tampa um a local uh, home service business in tampa and that was basically my first client. So awesome. working, on that, working on that now. And that was, uh, we, we thought about this idea a month ago and now we have our first client. Um, I'm going to deliver that for a service and we'll basically dial it in and come to our community here. Yes. Grow Moringa and, and see what's the best. We're basically going to productize something for you guys. Right. So that very specific, that makes sense, it's affordable. Um, that also like is just a way for you to know that you're going to grow. Like, you, you know, working with service goes, you'll, you'll be able to grow. Absolutely. And that's because you're great in the growth hacking. You've done that with us <clears throat> this past year. Uh, everything that you've done with us has gotten us to our markers. We're almost at 10K subscribers. We're about to have our, our birthday here, which we'll talk about in a little bit later. Um, but your growth strategies that you're implementing with Grow Moringa uh, has also uh, 
kind of permeated into the other industries where you've gathered some information and you've been doing some analysis because in order to jump into an industry uh like say that service that that your client does you have to know really what where are the where are the eyes where are the eyes going right so with moringa now you've been you and i have been talking about moringa for six six seven years now so it's like you're really starting to hone in on what's like the keywords right the keywords in moringa so we kind of did a few things. We brought we brought some information to the table today. Uh, we found out some information about Moringa, the GDP. Uh, would you be willing to tell us a little bit more about the the uh, the GDP of Moringa around the world globally? Yeah, sure. Uh, so some of the data we just quickly searched was uh, in 2018 the global market revenue was 5.8 billion. And they're estimating that by 2025, it'll be a $10 billion market. Right. So uh, the, the COGR, which is uh, compounded annual growth rate, these are business terms, what is 8.9%. So 8. every year, the industry is growing 8.9%. Right. So like, like kind of like what Ray Dalio just came out with, when you look at the the stock market, it's, it's kind of like a little bit of a swiggle. Like, let me see if I can even just kind of do a quick little uh, diagram of what Ray Dalio did for us the other day is that there's little markers inside here. And I'll just put this up here like this. That's kind of what it is. There's a little bit of dips and turns and I'll have it here for you too. So you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see it. Where essentially this is kind of where we're in right now where the housing market and even the stock market will kind of like fall, right? And then it'll come back up. But overall, it's raising at about, you know, the stock market is about 10% a year, right? And then it, there's lots of little mini ones inside there, ups and downs, ups and ups and downs inside that. And essentially, that's what also has been happening with, with Moringa. Sometimes, you know, there's some, some lulls in the market. There might have been a huge batch, like I heard in 2012 there was a huge huge batch of moringa that got recalled because of e coli all right so that's one of the most common uh pathogens that can happen to plants is uh, it, it's fecal matter you know contamination essentially so maybe one of the workers or somebody an animal or something contaminated a batch and so a lot of the world's uh, Moringa was recalled in 2012, you know, because a, a specific country actually who was supplying U.S. at the time got recalled. It was found that there was some E. coli in a batch. And so that's also why we want to diversify and why we're di diversifying our batches and diversifying who our suppliers are because we're constantly testing. We're finding out that... Um, that we have this, this overall increase in the GDP for Moringa, but um, who who made who made like fifty million dollars last year off of Moringa? Good question. Uh, from what we saw, it was a Cooley Cooley. Cooley Cooley. Actually, their HQ is not too far from where I live, so it's kind of right. Funny. Right. Uh, they're down in Oakland. Uh, from my understanding. They're kind of number one right now in our book. They're kind of in everybody's ear. Um, yeah. I will say that they've been having some issues with quality. Mm. I'm on kind of like, kind of like on the inside a little bit, you know, with what's going on with, with Moringa around the world. And I hear that, um, you know, there's some issues with, with how USDA is, is certifying these farmers. Interesting. Because why is it that most people come to me when and they're telling me that that the moringa is is brown? You know, it's USDA certified organic, but it it, it consistently comes out brown. Like if you go to the grocery store right now, they're they're giving moringa a bad name. Honestly, mm -hmm. a lot of these companies they're putting brown moringa and some people will say no those are the minerals present in the soil okay okay 
um, oh no, the soil is is red in color in other countries, right? The soil is red in, in other countries and so it pulls up other minerals and so sure. it's thing. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me because no matter where I'm at here, I mean, of course, all the soil is the same here, but you look at pictures around the world and people can still produce green moringa in India and Africa. Yeah. It's green, yeah. right? Because we're seeing we're seeing it directly from farmers, but for some reason, the main suppliers around the world for moringa are able to get their crap in on the shelf, and that's because there's a little bit of a gap there in in honing in on that that process. So, like the USDA is great for many many things. But when you get down to the specifics in the niche market, such as what we're doing with Moringa, um, they have no idea how it needs to be dried and how it needs to be processed and how it needs to be packaged, especially as if it's being exported over here to this country. So what one of our members here have done with, with me, Barry, at Moringa Products USA, is contacted over 50 Indian farmers and we had them send us samples. And we had each of them who did not have any of their paperwork completely filled out and, and perfected, USDA, FDA, the soil analysis, and also the nutritional testing. If none of that stuff was in place, it was automatically scrapped. A lot of times we're, we're getting bombarded by people on the internet who are trying to sell us, whether in WhatsApp or Facebook or through email. Hey, buy my Moringa, buy my Moringa. But once we get down to it, this is what we realize is that they don't, a lot of them really don't have any certifications or any anything of any kind of substantial value that we can say, well, we can buy it then from you. Right. So, so that's, that's why we're making sure that if you want USDA certified organic to, to come to us, because we're going through hundreds of USDA certified organic Moringa farmers around the world, that way when you order it from us in bulk, we're finding the best, best farmer that has it at the time, because different parts of the world will have different seasons. Just to stay on topic, 10 to 12, we're on yeah. levels of Yes, we are. We are on like 8 to 10, 10 to 12 levels of zeatin. We're going to go. And we were just saying that how, do, how, how, do, how does the avocado industry be able to, to supply the world with avocados all year round? Well, it's because on this month, they're going to get it from Mexico. At this month, they're going to get it from Venezuela. At this month, they're going to get it from Costa Rica. And next month, they might get it from somewhere else. Right. You know, California or whoever has it in the season and the time because each region has a different time period in which it's ready. So we're becoming the worldwide hub for Moringa essentially where when you place that order, you can be super specific as a consumer. You can say, hey, I only want Moringa from Florida. We have Florida Moringa. That's available. Hey, I only want Moringa from California. We have California Moringa. But right now at the checkout, we have a USA powder and we also have a USDA certified organic powder. And what that means is you can get a USDA certified organic powder that's imported from anywhere around the world from the best samples that we have available from our stock. And you could get 20 kilos a month, 100 kilos a month. We now have that option on the website. If you want it to be local USA and you want it to be uh, from a, from a local farmer, but also it doesn't need to be USDA certified organic. That's where a lot of our farmers are in that transitionary period of three to five years of getting their farms USDA certified organic. They're already growing it organically. It's already been tested. The soil's been tested. Nutritional values have been established, but um, they don't officially have the status. And so it takes a couple years, but it's all good. The testing is good. Uh, you know, the leaves and everything has you know, really great nutrients, vitamins, it's free from heavy metals. That's really the most important thing is, is when companies, large companies are trying to source Moringa from, 
from the farmers, they're having to go to different countries, different places, because there's different qualities being, being harvested at different times of the year. And so that's also what we're beginning to practice as we begin to scale and grow this company together, this beautiful company together with lots of really great, beautiful people that we've been able to meet in the members area. And yeah, uh, awesome people there. Yeah. Love them. Yeah, we're meeting we're meeting every day. So we love having you in there. We go to the, we do the webinars every day, which is really cool. But um I hope you're enjoying the episode with Jason Rashidnia. Just wanted to show you our latest harvest one of our harvesters that are on the map. So you, if you go to the map, you can actually reach any one of our trained harvesters to help you with your Moringa tree. If it's getting out of hand, you need to get, get it bring, brought back. This one we measured at like 20 something feet. <laughs> and uh, it was way up there. So we had to, he had to you know cut it in pieces and we have it and we brought it back to the farm. We'll probably plant, look at this. Look at this big old tree here. And then what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and process it, separate the greens into bins. We're just stripping directly from the tree. We'll get the greens washed up and we'll take them to the dry room. And then also we have a little farmer's market going on right now where you can make products and sell products right from the farmer's market and produce things by hand, especially like the loose leaf, the powder, we separate the flowers as well as have beautiful seeds and I really want to educate you on being able to get to a final product and that's really the key here and the reason why we showcase our journey in the moringa tree industry so that way you can see how to go from a raw product to the tree into something that is consumable and is really enjoyable and loved by many around the world. And I hope that you're enjoying our conversation with Jason. It's a really great way for you to uh, learn about Moringa, behind the scenes, the industry, and would love for you to get on the map as a yearly member and also help us harvest trees because we're getting calls all over the country right now. Hey, can you come harvest my tree? Can you come harvest my tree? And we would love to put you in contact with somebody close by to you that needs help harvesting as you would become a trained harvester in the Growing Ringer Collective. We'll teach you everything that you need to know, getting your trees cut back, getting other people's trees cut back, and then what you would need to do to safely prepare it and how you would also get compensated for the job too. So what we're doing is we're gonna weigh this out. We're gonna see exactly how much we can sell these leaves for. We're gonna give some products back to the owner and we're gonna give some products or some cash back to the harvester. And that's how we all work together in growing and sharing some of the responsibilities of the Moringa tree industry. We're having a beautiful market day today. Actually, you can come by any Saturday morning and join us for a little educational training session, a tour and a talk with me here at Grow Moringa Farms in Plant City, Florida. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the rest of the episode with Jason. Peace. We were talking about what makes Moringa so special on the global market is that it's not just for human consumption, but it's also for plant consumption and animal consumption. Yes. And, uh, Believe it or not, human consumption is only one billion, one to two billion dollars a year. Out of that eight or nine billion a year that we're at right now in 2022, because we'll be at about 10 billion next year or so, um, one billion to two billion of that is is human production, human human consumption, meaning powder like this, like human powder, right? Oh, this is our this is our tree, right? Being able to eat it, and three to five billion of that a year is actually plant consumption, uh, sorry, animal consumption. So that's more cool. animals are consuming Moringa than people. And that's so wild. Just, just when you really think about it, um, I think that's a market we really got to start pushing on. Yeah. Well, I mean, we are, we have our, an, we have our animal feed powder 
And we also have our liquid biostimulant that is essentially made from moringa leaves. This is our moringa leaf biostimulant. So we have all three markets. That's what we've been spending mostly this year on is getting those three down, teaching and educating our members that if they want to get started selling moringa today, they don't necessarily have to sell it for human consumption, which is the most rules, the most regulations, the most restrictions. Just get it out there and get it sold and make the money off of animal consumption and also plant consumption because there's lots of big money to be made there in the global GDP of Moringa as a whole. Agreed. Agreed. Um, the reason why Moringa grows so fast is that hormone that we extract essentially from the leaves known as zeatin. Zeatin is essentially pure nitrogen. And that's what I'm learning is, is that it just, it's essentially, it's hand in hand with nitrogen. Nitrogen is one of the three things that's inside of a fertilizer, a synthesized fertilizer. They do NPK, which is nitrogen, potassium, and, or, or phosphorus and potassium. And so those three things essentially make up a fertilizer. And um, nitrogen is also the key ingredient in Moringa, which is mostly so here. How does, how does zetin differentiate from nitrogen? Or is it is zetin has the nitrogen in it and is zetin has some other components? Uh, I would say that zetin is made up of nitrogen. It's made up of nitrogen, but it's its own thing, right? So yes. it has definitely some other properties that make it stand out on its own, right? It's a hormone. With, that's a chemical compound that's naturally occurring that 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 feeds off of the high levels of nitrogen. Yeah. It's like nitrogen is the fuel that allows zeatin to essentially be a thousand times more than any other plant. You know, um, we're talking to several scientists, industrial engineers who are helping us make this formula. Actually, they're the makers of the formula here which essentially is just cooking down fresh Moringa leaves. And of course, there's a few other things in there, but uh, you're getting a concentrated uh, extract of the leaf. And it's the active hormone and active ingredient in it is zeatin, which is naturally found in the Moringa. But one of the issues that we're being faced with here in Florida to get more farmers to grow Moringa is the invasiveness issue. Because there's a, it is considered an invasive plant. Yeah, but what were you, when you were in, when you were in Tallahassee for a little while, and also what we're continuing to do with Carrie Waterman and her work and her team, um, tell us a little Dr. bit about- Dr. Carrie Waterman. Dr. Carrie Waterman, the doctor, the Moringa doctor, don't don't get it confused, man. She is boss, boss lady. She yes. is running it. She is the Moringa Queen. Mm -hmm. Amazing work that she's doing. I think she was just doing some mission work down in Haiti. She just got back from Haiti. Yep, I just saw something. An article came out with her, and she just came back from Haiti. She's out of UC Davis, California. What were you doing in Tallahassee? Good, good question. So. Um, I was working to get a bill written to make Moringa Florida's first state vegetable. Wow. Thank you, brother. Thank you for doing that. Thanks for getting the attention and put it right there and drop it in their face. We're actually within our members area. We're signing. We're going to be signing that bill uh, so that way we can get petition for even it to be come back up on the. I think we need a. We need about four thousand signatures. So, yep. so there's a lot of work. there's a lot of work to do. Um, to be honest, I don't know everything that has to get done. I just know we have to do it. Yeah. Right? So yeah. we're building that list right now together, you and I, behind the scenes, because one of the reasons why Florida won't be able to scale uh, the moringa farming industry and the agriculture industry is because it is on the invasive list. Now, okay. wink, wink, hush, hush, quiet, quiet. Like, does it really mean that it's invasive? You know, like, I, I, 
it's in my opinion that I want it to be invasive. <laughs> I, I, I know. want everybody to have moringa. Right? Wow. Like, you know, have as much moringa as possible. It's only going to help you. It's help only going to help. But that's the issue that's being, that's on the ballot. That's the only reason. And so how convenient that big sugar and big citrus, I mean, there, there's five families that own half, like five families own 20 million acres in Florida. That's half of Florida. Okay. Wow. All right, so 20 million acres is owned by a small handful of families that have been here since plantation era, you know, gotcha. pre, what do they call that, reformation, you know, mm. Civil War era families who don't want to see those, those three to five crops that Florida produces, because Florida is number two on the GDP for the entire USA, behind, only behind California. Oh, is that right? I yeah. Mean, I just know that. <laughs> yeah. Is Texas, was Texas, Texas and Florida go back and forth. Mm. But Florida pumps it out agriculturally. Oh, well now, okay. Oh, you're talking about agriculture. Yeah. Market. Yeah. And yeah. So that, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to only grow because of so many people moving to Florida. Yeah. I <laughs> saw so this one lady. She posted on Facebook. She's like, uh, she posted a picture of like all of her furniture and she's like, it's too damn hot. I've only been here a couple months, but I'm out. <laughs> Good. Go. <laughs> and so yeah. that's what's happening to, they, they just realized like all the people that moved here less than a year ago, the, the 10,000 yeah. people a day or something like that to Florida. So now that it's summer, yeah. they're, they're jumping, they're diving out. Get it. Get out. They're like, oh, can't take the heat. Get Get out, give me your house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Moringa actually helps with free radicals. So if they were to take more Moringa, they'd be able to handle that heat. Exactly. Which it grows on arable, like hot land, right? Yep. It's supposed to grow on that. Yeah. So that's why it grows really great here, which is why they're concerned. The invasiveness, here's the biggest issue with invasiveness, mm -hmm. is that it prevents farmers from achieving tax incentives known as grain belting. This is the biggest thing. Carrie Waterman, Dr. Carrie Waterman and I, we talk very shortly, not very long, but we understand each other. She knows, she knows what's going on. I know what's going on. She wanted to let me know that she's working. She saw the bill. She knows that we're working on the bill. She called us. She's working on a grant for Florida farmers, but she's also being railroaded by Florida because it is on that invasive list that it can it, it's not able to be recognized as a tax incentive plant or tree that people can grow as a green belting opportunity green belting is where if you have like x amount of trees on your acreage uh you can get tax incentives for say having 50 100 500 or 5,000 trees on your property right now that really only counts for like oak trees pine trees and a few other selected listed trees so if you didn't want to have a pasture and you didn't want to have animals you could still get a tax break by having an x amount of trees on your property so she's working on getting moringa on the green belt tax incentive list right but in order to do that we have to get it both us our team and her team have to get it off of the invasive list i see so in order to get off the in order to be green belted for the state of florida so that way when when, when someone calls us it says, hey, I want to plant 5,000 trees on my acre or whatever on my acreage. Um, what is going to be my tax break for my, my property tax? Uh, it yeah. has to get off the invasive list in order for Moringa to be counted as a green belt and tree. Okay. So we were mentioning, oh, well, is it really even invasive? Well, first of all, it dies back in frost and half the state freezes every year. Believe it or not, Florida goes through several days of frost. As soon as Moringa hits a frost, it's done. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't come back. Uh, very rarely, you know, does it come back to the type of frost that hit Florida. So, it it can never really hit that massive scale of invasiveness. But I just came out with another video that talked a little bit more about the invasiveness is issue, and I would suggest that you guys go watch that. It's it's the why 
why grow moringa video and that'll talk more about why you should grow moringa and it talks a little bit more about that invasive invasive issue but um i really loved just having you really quickly on the show here we're gonna close up with some news we're gonna we're gonna announce a few things together let's do it let's do it yeah. um happy birthday happy one year birthday we did it birthday grow moringa happy birthday grow moringa we we made our first year so thank you everybody who's made the transition with us who went from Numa Nursery and is still riding with us in Grow Moringa because they see nothing's really changed, just the name, you know, and we're just going even harder with Moringa. Um, the, big, the bigger we are in that, in our Moringa space, the more will flourish everywhere else. So the, it, it just, it just helps in the grand scheme of things. You know, it's just like, you know, what we're trying to do overall on our missions, like we have to be known for something and globally and then the rest will fall yep we'll fall low right so that's why we did it and we decided to have it here in tampa yes <laughs> we were going back and forth between miami orlando tampa. it's got to be tampa. tampa it's just we're here three it's okay, got to be 813 <laughs> jason's originally from tampa born and raised were you born here I was born in St. Pete. You were born here, man. You were born and raised here, uh, mm -hmm. temporarily in California, out there in San Fran, hanging with the San Frans. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. I'm just here with family. Just That's here with family for right now. But yeah. uh, would love to bring you back over here for our one-year anniversary, possibly for that weekend. It's going to be the second or third week of September. Our birthday is actually 9 Nine thirteen, September 13th is our birthday, is our one year birthday. And that's when we had our first meeting with our founding members. That's when we opened up our members community. Now, one year later, we have 400 members and um, we're gonna have a party. We're gonna have a party. It's gonna be a fundraiser actually. And um, we're raising funds for uh, MoringaCon. MoringaCon! Yes, which will be in November. So two announcements, one of which, if you're a member, you can attend our first annual members meeting. It's going to have uh, some, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have an award ceremony. You know, it's going to have some member highlights. Uh, we're going to have a beautiful dinner. We're going to have to do something fun. Of course, I'm going to come up with some games and things like that. We're going to do the game thing. Uh, well, you know, pin the moringa on the tree, <laughs> you know, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> um, so we're going to shut down a restaurant somewhere in Tampa. We're going to have uh, a, um, a little birthday party. Uh, we're going to be drinking uh, moringa shots, moringa Ooh. tincture, moringa tincture shots, Ooh. moringa extract. We're going to be taking shots of moringa extract, making sure we're getting our, our green juice. One thing, <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. I, I, we have to create our own moringa drink. Yeah. Um, and and in order for this to happen, I want our community to basically invest in all of it. Where we'll do the ops. Yeah. Now, this is you know I'm, I'm shooting from the hip right now. So, yeah, no. Oh yeah, do it in front uh, of everybody. So yeah, exactly. So my thinking was. We need a, a line of consumer products that we can consume that tastes good because just straight moringa gets a little tough. It's true. Right? So what I do is I, I put moringa with lemon juice, concentrated mm -hmm. lemon juice and water, and that goes down, but still it's not yeah. the best. I mean, I, I put it in my chocolate smoothies. I put moringa right. in my chocolate moringa smoothie. I, I want a more faster delivery method for my items, for my my minerals right yeah so like mixing the oil mm -hmm. mixing the oil and so I mean, we got to figure it out like I, I, I really want to do like an energy drink you're talking like a fresh is it carbonated maybe maybe I or think so like we should brainstorm I want to brainstorm with everybody and I'll figure out like all the stuff the manufacturing side no yeah oh yeah no that's you what what about um I know how to do all that 
but I've seen Moringa shots. Remember that five hour energy shot? Remember you sent yeah. me that picture a couple years ago? There, yeah. There is somebody that's doing the Moringa shots. Oh. Cooley Cooley did that, right? You know, I, I want our own. You know, we're not yeah. Cooley Cooley. No, 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 no. We need our own. We need our own because our members are supplying this Moringa. Yeah. And so it, this is the, I think the missing link is we need to have something. I was just telling Ariel that this morning is like, let's get on this consistency of like having a company find us and getting a subscription for 100 kilos a month. I've been saying no for years. I'm ready to say yes. We have the stock. We have it in place. We can do that now. Beautiful. But Beautiful. if we create something like this drink, then that's where we can pay our members and we always have a supply. Same thing with my spice. We get the spice off the ground. The spice is always kicking. You know, that's making 20 million a year, but that's buying Moringa from from the members. So having these other lines and all these other brands is what's going to be important about our members supplying. Ultimately, how do we keep, how do we get our Moringa inside of everybody's home? I Ooh, possible. I said that. I literally, I literally said that. You know, we're like, we're like this. Really are. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, bro. Yeah, bro. I had a good time today. Was there anything else that you kind of wanted to to mention? We we talked about our our celebratory birthday. We talked about Moringa Con. So the birthday event is going to be a meeting, and we're going to be meeting about our organization for our Moringa Conference, uh, which we're going to also have in Tampa. So we're going to host both of those this year in Tampa. We set it here first. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be fundraising. Uh, through tickets, through our members' tickets, and then from there we're going to open up tickets to MoringaCon. It's open to anybody, so MoringaCon is going to be open to anybody from there. And those are really going to be our our major, you know, ways to talk, you know, to to get some investment. But also, you were talking a little bit earlier before we got on about these equity investment oh, opportunities. Yes, 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 yes. So that's where I, I think in the meeting when we do this annual members meeting i want to put together a, a package for everybody right everybody who's committed to the growth of this company who believes in chemtrick from day one um we want to put a real equity crowdfunding package for friends and family and in public too but ultimately we want this to be bigger than us right so we took it to this point you know we're we're here now and we needed to get bigger so we want to we want to invite our members um anybody who's been following the journey to actually invest and own equity in this company that's right and we have right now uh an equity agreement with our lifetime members where they own a share uh, we have ten thousand shares available right now of lifetime membership you can actually get a share of the company we divided the company into member shares and we have 10,000 lifetime membership shares available. And so that's one of the equity opportunities. That's one of them. And then there's this fund that we also want to build up because someone could afford the thousand dollar. They get, you know, a piece of a fraction of a fraction. It's a fractional ownership of the company with that share with a thousand dollars. They see yeah. dividends uh, from the members, uh, profits from the profits that are coming in through the members uh, division but there's also second round third round investment opportunities for say someone that can that can put in a hundred thousand dollars or potentially a million dollars into grow moringa and that's what we would like to talk about in the next four to six weeks we're going to be coming out with a package that we could have our equity investors um, invest in the Moringa. They don't have to be members, but we are looking to see if our members um, would like to take on some investments. Essentially, um, we want to professionalize this thing. Yeah. Now, it's, not, it's not huge yet, right? We just, can we share our numbers, our actual revenue numbers? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, uh, we're reaching uh, about $20,000 a month. Now, in Grow Moringa's uh, gross and gross revenue for Moringa products, 
We're doing about $20,000 a month, zero to 20K a month in one year. So that's great, right? It's, and, and we have a lot of room for them. So like in order to get to that next level, we are inviting other people to get a piece of the action. That's right. right. The point being is uh, we want to be able to hire professional people to, you know, even better than us, marketing, mm -hmm. uh, better design, whatever we need. Well, yeah, we're missing a whole team. We're missing a whole board of directors right now. We still well, more, more like just being able to hire. Uh, we because we, we want to push out more content. Oh more yeah. More. Oh so yes. Content's everything, right? And and, and professionalized content. Yes. Um, so that we can gain the algorithms, right? So I'm a growth hacker, but we haven't fully like turned on the growth hacking. Yes. Right? Yes. And or the growth marketing strategy like big tech companies utilize, right? Yeah. And I know how they do it, right? I understand how they do it, but it costs costs stuff. Yeah. Costs money. And we had to prove everything to everybody. It's like going, walking into a bank. You can't just walk into a bank without anything. Now we have substantial. Boom! Here's our here's here's our sales. You know, here's our member. Here's our community. This is this is really, really what ties everything together. And I want to uh, what was it? The I, I want to basically be fully transparent. That basically built this company in public, right? You yep. see all the numbers. You see everything. Um, that's it, and it's just like you'll you know, be able to be a part of even more, you know, the back end, the front end, all ends. <laughs> yeah, I think that's important because that's a question that we actually get asked a lot by callers: is what's the ROI? What am I going to make my first year of growing? And that's what we can answer for you in the Growing a Collective members area. It's going to take a little bit of time for us to ask you some questions as well. So get in for twenty five bucks. 25 bucks, you can get all of the answers. Um, this is what I'm telling to people that are on the outside that want to know how much can they make growing Moringa. You can make money growing peanuts. Yeah. Okay. So why are you worried about growing, making money growing Moringa? It, it, it's like you got to have that passion for Moringa, like the way that we have. We're going to see that, and we're all going to be making money because we have the love for Moringa. That's that's going to be the given. But if you're coming into this and it's just really about Moringa, you know. Consider taking the smoothie and see how you feel. You know, consider taking the, the capsules and the powders. That might be a prerequisite that we say it's like if you're not if you're not consuming it, like you know, it's like you don't understand what what what's going you don't on. Get why. You don't, yeah, you, you don't, don't get it. The why. Exactly. And that's our biggest thing is the why. You have to consume the product. Right? Yeah. The quality product, of course. And yeah. That was the whole point of Grow Moringa as a company is to teach people how to grow a quality product. So like we touched on earlier, USDA certified comes brown, blah, 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 blah. Like, forget all the public official stuff. Grow it properly and just share it among your fam friends and family until you can grow that momentum and make an, ex an extra income. Thank you. You know, thank you. Job. That's what I'm saying. Like, most people are calling and they've never grown anything in their life and they're asking questions. That are that are like coming from someone that's never grown anything. So another thing, and, I, and I'm shooting from the hip again. Once you learn how to grow, the other side is like we actually do want to sell you a pharma box. We want to create the system, you know, the pharma tech system in a box. So um, I've been actually talking to shipping container people recently. Mm. I've been begging Kendrick to get ready and start designing some shipping container homes. Thank you. I actually have this week. I talked and to the members about that. So like, I know we're getting a little off topic, but this is it's okay. So it's not just your equity crowdfunding for uh, an e-learning company. You're, we want to bundle in the farm and box into this thing. Now we don't have anything built. It's all conceptual, it's all design. But ultimately, like, that's where we're headed. Yeah. Learn, you learn how to grow, and then here's the farm in a box, and anybody who joins the fundraiser or the meeting, the, our, our birthday meeting, we'll probably, we'll get into more detail on that. So that's yeah. a little there for now. Thank you. <laughs> and what Jason means about uh, farm in a box, it's like a kit of parts. 
meaning this mm -hmm. is what architects, designers do. Uh, we put together a blueprint of a house, right? This this piece of this there's a wall here, there's a window here. That's essentially what we're doing for our members when they come to us and they say, we have an acre. We literally give them a plan. Here's what you need on your one acre. Uh, yep. This is where your infrastructure is going to go. This is where your irrigation is going to go. This is where your trees are going to go in an intensive bed, uh, a hedgerow, or an orchard. You know, So we're laying out all of that in a box. We're taking someone's property and we're literally designing custom custom built farms in a box. And that's really what Jason is saying is being able to take my architecture profession and offer that and box that up into that designer farm architecture model that we're really growing into. Our clients, our members are really growing with us because they, they first heard of Moringa from me maybe a year or two years ago or even yesterday or today. And one year from now, they're gonna be a little bit more ahead of the curve. Two years from now, they're going to have possibly an acre. You know, three to five years from now, they're going to be like looking for five, ten, a hundred acres to grow moringa, and they're going to ask, "Can we help design that for them?" And that's what we want to grow with all of our members together is through that process of starting from just growing a few trees in your backyard to then partnering with us as a USDA certified organic grower and certified grow moringa of course, grower, which by the way, are very similar. It's really just, we're testing for, for heavy metals and we're testing for heavy metals. Same thing with USDA. Essentially, we're doing the same thing that, that they're doing. The same thing, we're just not officially sanctioned by the government. Exactly. The government works for us, so it's okay. It's you okay. Just understand that. They it's work right. for us. That's so, right. As, as sovereign individuals, yeah. you need to understand the government, we place them there. Wow. They, we are the power. Wow. So, um, Thank you. You just got to know how to stand up, right? And that's one of the biggest things is you just, people don't know. They, you don't know the law, legal, so the difference between those two yeah. dynamics. Uh, well, we're going to get into that right now. But It's cool. Uh, Little do they, do they know you're actually standing up right now. Oh. <laughs> on the second floor, so I'm higher than the, than the ground. <laughs> nice. Well, I had such a really good time with you today. Of course, we get to talk every day, but luckily we get to have our fun time in front of everybody as well. So yeah, hope everybody yeah, enjoyed sure. it. Love it. I'm um, glad we did it. And I mean, how do you want to close it off? What do you want to say? What well, are we closing on? That was the close. Huh? Yeah, this is the close, you know, and we'll see you soon. We'll have you back on here soon. We'll do a couple more members and then we'll have you back on so we can have a conversation of where we are then because we're growing exponentially at this point right now. So. We're gonna grow. We're gonna grow even faster. Um, you know, now that I have my growth team, and I'm gonna stick them into what we need to do for Grow Moringa um, pretty soon. So I got like in our Slack channel right now. I told everybody create a Cora.com account, yep. and I will show you how to get traffic, more traffic. To right, and so that's gonna be a great place to put that also. Even just even posting it into the members area, I tell people, and I know you just posted that in our Slack, but also we should get all of our members to create a Quora so that way. Oh, yeah. So that, okay. So when I said that, I created a private group in Quora.com called Permaculture Capitalists. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to throw that link in Mighty Networks where our community is. I'm going to have everybody join it. We're just going to leverage it. It's just another channel. Yes. Right? So Mighty Networks is our private area, but we have to leverage every single social channel on the internet mm -hmm. if we want to grow this ecosystem, if mm -hmm. we want to grow, if you want your equity to grow. Yeah. Right? Like, so I'm going to teach everybody how to grow hack and how the biggest companies in the world, the biggest funded companies in the world, scale their businesses into the billions. Wow. Population, whatever. It's massive. Yeah, it's, it's massive. So it's like we're going to just... We're going to apply these strategies to regenerative agriculture, specifically our niche from Moringa. But then it's a formula that we can attach to basically every plant. And if you want to be a growcarrots.com or a grow whatever, like we'll give you the formula. We'll show you. Awesome. You're, you're going to grow this formula with us, the frameworks of growth, marketing, regenerative plants and agriculture for every layer of the, of the ag space. Wow. So, 
Yeah, this is this is the testing ground, the bed for everything else. So whoever's the top carrot person, let's go befriend them. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and we'll keep multiplying that throughout the plant businesses because I think that's what we also need to do for farmers. We're talking about connecting that farmer personality with the buyer personality. The farmer doesn't want to talk to people, but every time I get a call from a big farmer, they're like, where are the buyers at? And then I get a caller from a buyer like, yo, where are the farmers at? Yep. I'm like, yo, can y'all talk? Exactly. So so what we are doing is putting people in the same room. We're creating the communities so that the buyers and the sellers meet. And cool. you see that as Grow Moringa, what it's happened. Imagine this happening to every other regenerative ag plant that's possible, right? So I'm all in it. This is like, this is... Food is everything. It's not going anywhere. Um, and we're building the frameworks of growing the future of farming, essentially. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah, beautiful. I got a jet. Me too. I'm hungry, and you got to go. And so. Peace and love. Peace and love. Thanks for being here. High vibes. High vibes. If you guys want to reach Jason, come into the Mighty Networks members area. Go to growmringer.com. Sign up. And you can talk to Jason and myself any day of the week. We're in there. We're available for our members first and foremost. And yeah. thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Wonderful. And also keep in mind, you can email us at we at growamaranga.com as well. Um, I would normally plug my personal website, but it's being rebuilt now. Yeah. No, it's cool, man. Thanks for plugging our website. And also give us a call, 813-567-3100. Jason also sees the text messages just be like, hey, Jason, if you want to get in touch with him, he'll give you a ring. All right. All right. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody. You Much it. love. Now, waiting on a deal on my own time, on my own ground. You know, we ain't never going to quit. Take my heart, baby girl, let's go. You know, life's too short. Don't you miss the phone?